Welcome to the laboratory. This video demonstrates two key techniques in microbiology, aseptic technique and the street plate technique. Aseptic technique basically means to create and maintain a clean sterile environment for you to work in. This is extremely important when working with microorganisms because you want to be sure that the organism you're transferring to the plate or a broth is your organism of interest without any contaminants. So to create a sterile environment, we firstly need to wipe down the surface that we're working on. So you should have some bench cleaner. So spray the bench with the bench cleaner. Bench cleaner is basically disinfectant, which will remove any dust or unwanted organisms that may be on the bench. So wipe down the disinfectant with a tissue or some paper towel provided and place that in the bin. A key piece of equipment that you need to use to create a sterile environment is the Bunsen burner. When the Bunsen is lit, the flame creates an area of sterility in the air and also keeps the bench nice and clean as well. So you want to light that soon after you've wiped your bench down. So grab your matches, strike your match, and then ensure that the hole of the Bunsen is closed and then you can turn on your tap. You should hear the gas coming out and then you can light your flame and your match can be disposed of in the pipette bucket. So when you're not directly using your flame, you should have it on the orange flame, just so that you're aware that it's there and that you don't accidentally wave your hand or arm through it. So the technique that I'm going to demonstrate is the street plate technique. So this involves transferring an organism, whether it be from a solid medium or from a broth culture onto another solid medium. So in this example, I'm going to use nutrient agar and I'm transferring the organism E. coli. One of the first things you need to do when performing the street plate technique is to actually label your plate. So you should have a permanent marker on your bench and you need to label your plate with some key information. Because this is a nutrient agar plate, I'm going to label the plate with NA, the abbreviation from nutrient agar, and you should also include your initials from your first name, your middle name, and your last name. And in this example, I'm transferring E. coli. So you can write the organism name, or you could write the exercise number that this plate refers to. You must also include the date in your labelling. So you should always label your plate on the bottom of the plate, just in case the lid is lost in transit or is removed from the plate. So you would always label it on the bottom and you also need to label it on the edge or the circumference of the plate so it doesn't obstruct the view of what is growing on your plate. The street plate technique is actually shown in a diagram in your manual. So this is figure one. To perform the street plate technique, it requires you to use a sterile loop and to transfer some bacteria or yeast onto a plate and then to continue streaking it. So basically the purpose of the street plate technique is to dilute the number of cells so that when you get to your quaternary lines, you should have individual colonies. So one viable cell from a bacteria or yeast usually gives rise to one colony. So in this diagram, you can see in the quaternary steps that there are streak lines which don't intersect with the tertiary lines. That is one way of performing the streak plate technique. With your quaternary lines, you could also perform a vertical line and a squiggle into the middle of the plate. There are a number of ways that you can do this and both ways are acceptable. So to transfer your organism, you want to make sure that your Bunsen flame is turned to the blue flame so that you can see the apex of the flame. You will need your loop and you're going to sterilise it in the flame. So basically the loop is a piece of wire with a loop on the end and you want to make sure that the entire surface of the loop, including the stem, is sterile. So you basically hold it in the blue flame and you can see it turns orange when it gets hot. 
and you want to make sure the stem and the lube is sterile. Once that's sterilised, you need to let it cool for a few seconds, so just hold it near your Bunsen flame. A way of determining whether the loop is cool enough is to actually touch it to the agar surface of the plate. So the, the loop needs to be cool because if it's very hot it can actually kill the bacteria or yeast that you put onto your loop and you don't want them to be killed. So in this example I have some E. coli on a solid medium. So now my loop is sterile and cool enough, I'll just check by touching it to the surface of the plate. It didn't sizzle, so it's ready to be used. So you want to collect a single colony from this plate and transfer it onto your new sterile agar plate. So remember, when you labelled your plate, it was upside down, so you need to turn it now the right way up. If you feel uncomfortable when streaking, you can actually draw the streak lines as per your diagram onto the bottom of the plate. For this demonstration, I'm not going to do that because it will obstruct the view. So now I have my colony on my loop. I'm going to perform the primary streaks. So basically, you move your loop with the bacteria on it back and forth onto the surface of the agar. And that has to be done very gently so that you don't tear the agar. The agar is hard, but it is like a jelly substance and it can easily tear. So once you've transferred it, you need to flame your loop again to ensure that any excess bacteria is removed. Remember, the purpose of the streak plate technique is to dilute the cells. So we're removing any of the cells that might have been on our loop. So you need to make sure that you turn the plate so that you can perform your secondary set of street lines. So they must intersect with the primary ones. So by turning the plate, that helps you to remember that you need to intersect them. So you need to drag the loop across the surface of the agar, this time lifting it off at each of the strokes. And then replace the lid. And then again, you need to flame your loop. So it's really important when you're streaking as well that you make sure your plate isn't exposed to the air for very long. So after each set of streaks, you should replace your lid very quickly. So once your loop has cooled, you can touch it to the surface to make sure it's cool enough. And then turn the plate and intersect your secondary streak lines to create your tertiary streak lines. Replace the lid and then flame the loop for the final set of street lines. So I've turned the plate, I'm going to check that my loop is cool and I'm going to intersect the tertiary lines with the quaternary lines. One, two, three, and now I'm going to flip the loop upside down, drag a vertical line through those lines and then a zigzag into the middle of the plate so that I get my single isolated colonies. You need to flame your loop once you've completed the procedure to make sure you remove any bacteria that might be on there and then place it at the base of your Bunsen to cool for later on. So now that your plate is complete, you may be able to see the streak lines when you hold it up to the light. So you should be able to see your pattern of streak lines. So if you can see streak lines, that means that you have touched the loop to the surface of the plate and you should get some bacteria growing on there. For incubation, you need to place your plate upside down. That's to ensure that no condensation forms on the lid and drops onto the surface of your plate and that can actually contaminate your sample. So you need to always turn it upside down and put it to one side. If you are using fungi, there are instances that where you don't need to turn your plate upside down, but we'll make you aware of that in class. So that was a demonstration of how to perform the street plate technique using a bacteria from a solid surface. Now we're going to do it with a liquid broth. So here I have some E. coli in a broth. So just give it a quick swirl to make sure that the cells are suspended throughout the broth. 
you'll need a new clean plate and again you'll need to label the plate. So turn your plate upside down and we're going to write on the circumference of the plate and again this is nutrient agar so the abbreviation NA the initials from your first name, your middle name and your last name and then the exercise number or the organism I'm going to write E. coli and even E. coli B so I know it's from the broth and also the date so once again you need to flip your plate up the correct way so this is your starting point you need to re-sterilize your loop to make sure it's ready to collect some of the broth culture so because we are collecting a broth culture you want to make sure that the actual stem is sterile as well because a large portion of it has to go into the McCartney bottle to collect the culture so you need to do this aseptically so you need to loosen the lid of the McCartney bottle using the crook of your finger and then flame the neck of the bottle and then insert your sterile loop so give your loop a swirl around in the culture to make sure you collect some on your loop and then you need to reflame the neck of the bottle and replace the cap you should be able to see the broth solution in your loop it looks like a bubble and you know that you've collected some of the culture to be transferred so I'm going to streak this onto the plate and my starting point is where I've labelled the plate so this is my primary street lines so just drag the loop back and forth on the, off the surface of the plate replace the lid and then you need to sterilise your loop so when performing the street plate technique the only time that you transfer the inoculum which is your broth or a colony is in the primary the very first set of streets you never go back to the bottle or to the colony and put more onto your loop remember the purpose of the street plate technique is to dilute the number of cells so you you don't want to add more cells to your loop so now my loop is cool I'm going to intersect those primary set of street lines so I'm going to touch my loop to the surface to make sure it's cool enough and then intersect the primary street lines touching and then lifting off to create four individual street lines on the plate I then need to flame the loop again to remove any excess cells and then turn the plate so to make sure that my loop is cool I'm going to touch it to the middle of my plate and then intersect the secondary lines to create the tertiary lines so lifting the loop off after each separate line and then turning the plate ready for the final set of street lines so you need to sterilize your loop allow it to cool and then perform the final set of street lines touch the loop to the surface to make sure it's cool enough and then perform the lines for this final step you can flip your loop upside down without sterilizing it and create a vertical line and a zigzag to make sure that you get single colonies coming out into the middle of your plate you then need to reflame your loop to make sure that there's no bacteria left on it and place it at the bottom of your Bunsen burner again this plate is going to be incubated so we compare it with the other plate and again it must be upside down so that the condensation from the lid doesn't drop onto the surface of the plate and then you need to band, rubber band those together with a single rubber band to make sure that your samples stay together in the incubator 
You then need to place this into the appropriate box for incubation. When you've completed a technique such as the street plate technique, you must also ensure that you've cleaned your bench down when you've finished the exercise. So that involves turning off the Bunsen. So make sure you twist it so that the hole is closed on your Bunsen burner and you see your yellow flame and then it's ready to turn off at the gas. You must also wipe the bench down just in case any of the culture was spilt or accidentally flicked onto the bench surface when you were working there and wipe down the disinfectant with a tissue. You can pop that in the bin. You must also make sure that you wash your hands before you leave the lab. So now you have the knowledge and have seen how to perform a street plate technique. So go, go forth and street plates. <laughs>